is like... Okay. I can't remember. <laughs> Welcome to the last one. We had had so much bad news today. <laughs> but um, the Lord is in control. Okay. Uh, we're going to start by reading the Lord's Prayer. Um, <coughs> Enrique has the name. It's mine. I only got three because you took, you always take yours and never comes back. One. Oh, you don't have yours, but you know it by heart, don't you? you you're more Christian than I am, so. Mm. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I don't like this version. You don't like that version? That's the same version we pray. No, we say it, we say it different. Uh, holy be your name? Or how do be your name? How, how, how do we say it different? How? How, yeah, but then where do we change? Where do we change? <coughs> so now that you can pray about it. Tell me, you can do a in heaven. Give us a daily prayer. Forgive us our sins. So we can save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. Yeah, we say the same thing. <laughs> but some other, some, some other Bible says, uh, forgive, um, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. Which is quite weird. <laughs> That's the old English. Um... So let's go here. Yeah. Who, um, remember we asked last time in, Ma let's go Matthew 6 and Luke 11, that's where we are, Matthew 6 and Luke 11. It says, give us today our daily bread. And then he says, forgive us our <coughs> sins. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say forgive me or forgive them because that's what we like, yeah. Forgive them their sins. It says forgive us because sin is not only something that you do to yourself, sin is something that we do to other people too. There's one sin the Bible says that is, is sinning against you, um, uh, which uh, has to do with sex. <laughs> but um, sin is uh, mainly between people, uh, uh, between me and somebody else. As we forgive those, see, again, plural, those who sin against us, not only against me. And this is what, um, talking about the election, Donald Trump said that he doesn't need forgiveness because he has never done anything wrong. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So, he doesn't need forgiveness. And yet, evangelical Christians <laughs> voted for him. <laughs> Four out of five in the USA voted for him, even though he says that there's no sin. We're going to see that whoever says that is a liar. Whoever says that has no sin is a liar. And then... Save us from the time of trial, and, 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 and you run out of space, yeah? But you did the rest, yeah. And deliver us from evil. And deliver us from evil. Uh, who, who remembers Spider-Man, the first one? Yeah? You remember that part? <laughs> well, what happened, David? Everyone died. No, no, what happens when, 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 and, and deliver us from evil? Do you remember what, when, when the lady says that? What happens? That's when the, the goblin comes and destroys the, 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 the house. And she says, finish it! Finish it! Or end it? Well, He's not yeah, and deliver us from evil. Well, and then, and then the, the goblin is evil. So, um, so Spider-Man is a big Christian. <laughs> so a big Christian. Okay. Now, forgive us our sins. The most difficult, this is the most difficult part. This is these two lines. I said that these are the two most difficult lines in the whole prayer because we don't like to forgive. Yeah. We love to hold grudges because it makes me feel ah still. 
she knows or she knows I'm mad at them, so so they have to be very careful how they treat me. Let's let's open the Bible in Matthew eleven twenty five. Matthew eleven twenty five. Actually, not That's Matthew. Mine. Mark. No. Mark. 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 What is this in Mark? Mark. 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 You said Matthew. Mark, yeah, I know, but then Matthew. Matthew, Matthew. Mark 11.25, what does it say, Matthew? Oh, let read it. Yes. And yes. when you stand... Oh, wait, no, it <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's good, that's good. Because people at church, they... Oh, everybody's looking for the text and... Yeah, you pastors rush too much. Yes. Mm-hmm. To get to the other way. Yeah. All right. Good. So we're in the Bible again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark eleven twenty five. Yes. Okay. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you <coughs> your sins. Hmm. Hmm. So this is interesting, yeah. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. So if we don't forgive people, uh, our Father will not forgive us. And and just yes, take take note. We just read. Mark, Mark eleven twenty five. The Lord's prayer is not in Mark. Where is the Lord's prayer? Which two gospels? And Matthew and Luke. Yes. So you can find things of the Lord's prayer in the other gospels as well. In the Gospel of John, I didn't include that here, but in the Gospel of John, it has a lot of forgiveness. Whoever you forgive, and you may remember this, Enrique, because in the in the Catholic Church, <laughs> whoever you forgive their sins. Their sins will be forgiven, but if you don't forgive their sins, their sins will be kept. Uh, that's why the, the, the priest in the Catholic Church, in the Anglican Church, and in the Lutheran Church, he goes to the front and he says, Your sins are forgiven. And that's why, um, well, who, who does it? Enrique? Uh, Bishop Enrique? Bishop Celad? <laughs> <laughs> this? Dale, dale. Your sins are forgiven, so. I forgive, we, I forgive you. Is it? <laughs> but actually, this is a Christian thing, going like this, uh, <coughs> to forgive sins, because the Bible says that we can forgive sins in the name of Jesus. Is that when they put crosses on, on sniped rifles? Is they forgiven? They're forgiving. <laughs> too much, too much uh, um, Xbox in there. <laughs> so we forgive because we are forgiven. So forgive us our sins. So we need to forgive, we need to experience God's forgiveness on ourselves. And this is, a, and if anybody can open 1 John chapter 1 verse 8. Well, I just opened my card, it looks. Okay. Uh, uh, 1 John, John 1 8. John 1 8. Yes. Okay. Bye. Okay, what does it say? He himself was not the light. No. 1 John 1 8. Oh, 1 John, sorry. Oh, 1 John. Ah, oh, yeah. Speak English now. It's almost all the way to the end. <laughs> I want you to read it now. <coughs> 1 <laughs> So, how many, how many ones in this? Biblia, yeah? Segunda, tercera. No, yeah. James, yeah, I yeah. went too far. No, you yeah. keep on going. You're in James. You still have to go. Oh, really? Why they put him at the back? Yeah. Yeah. The people, the audience are looking. Yeah. <laughs> the audience are saying, you don't know where the, book, where the book is. Free letters. See, Enrique, Enrique, and you know what? You always ask me, you want to know the order of the books? This is the only way you learn. Yeah, yeah, lady. This is the only way you learn. Embarrassing, but putting pressure. Embarrassing. <laughs> so everybody there, if you want to learn Bible. Shame on you. And that's okay. why I ask you, Natalie. And, and okay, and First John what? Eight. One eight. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Uh, yes. And what else? If we confess our sins, mm-hmm. 
He is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. See, I told you that in John there's no there's the Lord's Prayer too. But you can find in the Gospel of John and you can also find in the letters of John the same teachings. The same teachings. Somebody told me this week, uh, this last two weeks, we had a big fight on Facebook. And he's a pastor. And he told me, the Lord's Prayer is not part of the Christian church. Yeah. It's not. Ah, you saw that, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it, it's, not, it's not part of it. It's not part of it. He's Pentecostal. He's dispensationalist. He said, no. He's talking to, to the people before his death. So I said, no, this is, this is, this is part of Christianity. Yeah. We pray the Lord's Prayer in, in, uh, in a lot of churches. Forgive us our sins. We still need to pray this. Mm. Because if we don't say forgive us our sins, it means that uh, we make him a liar. Because if I want to read that, that doesn't, doesn't steal John. Yeah, maybe uh, there's someone in John that says we make God a liar. If we say we don't have sin. Yeah. 1 8. If we claim we, 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 we deceive ourselves in the truth, not with us. If we, if we claim we have not seen, we make him out of yes, then to be a liar, and his word is not in us. So, First John, so eight, eight. Th there you go again. Uh, if we say we don't have sins, like we talk to someone, yeah, Enrique, mm -hmm. God has to let me go into heaven because I don't have any sins. Then, and that person is a Christian, and what, I, what did I say? If you're a Christian. How can you say you don't have a sin? Yeah. So why did Jesus come to die for? Why, why did he die in the, on the cross? To forgive? Yeah. To pay sins. the price for our sins? Because even though you may be 12, even though you may be 18, even though Maria may be 7, we all need forgiveness of sins. And that's... Uh, you can be 100 years old, but you still have sin in your heart. You can be in the bed, they are all like oldie and, and can't even get up to the bed, but you still can hate people. You can still go hold grudges. <coughs> yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> you can still but, hold grudges. But, but I think that a lot of people understand the word, the word forgiveness when you do something wrong mm -hmm. and not in the context of faith. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> no, no please, forgiveness. Please. Forgiveness is like people don't understand it. Because you, you think you can only forgive people when you do something wrong to them or when they do some, something wrong to you. But in the context of faith and eternal life, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you don't, you don't, people don't understand that concept. They don't understand why, why I've done nothing wrong. Oh, people who don't know Jesus. Or well, who know even, Jesus. even, people even who preachers. Mm -hmm. well, you know, you're telling people about this and the, you know, they're telling you that they... Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it was quite, inter quite amazing when they said, oh, you know, Lord's Prayer is not for us. Yeah. Forget it. And mm -hmm. he made a big deal. I said, how can you say that? You, uh, I even told him, you will sound like a heretic. Yeah. Because <laughs> he went too far. <clears throat> so we are sinners. We, we got that right. Yeah, we are sinners. We need forgiveness. As we forgive those who sin against us. It, um, Jesus forgave people. And, and, and if now go to Mark 2. Mark 2, I like it. Let's go back to Mark 2, please, Rick. <laughs> no, Rick, I want you to learn, because then Mark is after Matthew. Mm. What are the four Gospels? Pick my name. Matthew, Mark, Matthew, Mark, yeah. who else? <laughs> you heard me what you say? Luke, 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 Mark, John. Yes. Mm. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the order. I thought they were like, they got the Beatles name, so I don't know. Uh, two, there's Mark, yeah? One to twelve. They got the Beatles. John Paul and... And read the Spanish. It's a little heavy. It's all right, just to, for people to pay attention, man. <laughs> to, to keep it interesting, yeah? Yeah. So, well, I'm going to read this one. <coughs> you got Mark 2? Mark 2. Mark 2. Mark and another Mark 4, like we're talking about speed racing. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, that's why. Yeah, Mark 2, yeah? Yeah, see? Uh, people are going to know how old I am, so yeah, I my Enrique is <laughs> younger than me. Oh. <laughs> okay, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he, had, that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above, above Jesus by digging through it, and then, and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. 
When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed men, What do you think he's going to say? Like, without reading, and I know you read it already. But what do you think if somebody is, is uh, Jesus is God, and, and they put it and put and they put something on there? What, what do you think you're gonna say? Oh, you, you want me to heal you? Okay, boom, heal you. Yeah. No, so, but what, what did you say, son? Your sins are forgiven. And, and the guy and the guy there must, must be thinking, uh, and, and the friends. So we went through all this stuff. We we dig a hole in the roof. We lower him down. Yes. To be told that his sins was, were forgiven? Because that was the real problem. That was the real issue. Because sin sends you to hell. But anyway, he continues. Now, some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves. Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forget sins but God alone? So... So who can forgive sins? God. So who's Jesus? <coughs> the Son of God. The Son of God, yes. But who's Jesus? God. God incarnate. Yes. Okay. God incarnate. And that's good. Okay, that's good. Uh, God incarnate. God, uh, he is the Son of God. Remember, Son of God. Uh, Son of God. And I want to make. I want to make this point. Son of God. Son of man. What does son of man mean? Mm -hmm. You know, don't say. <laughs> you know. No sé, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what is son of man? <coughs> Represent the flesh part of, of, of Jesus. Means son of man. Yes. So one has to represent that Jesus is divine, and the other has to represent that he's flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is human. Mm -hmm. This is divine. Mm -hmm. Son of man is divine. And a lot of people think Son of God is... Oh, who's Son of God in the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. And he begot him, and, he, and his father was him, and, 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 he, and he was father of, of Abel, and, 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 and no... And Abel was no, no, no Seth was father of Saul, so, and, 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 and Adam was father of of Seth, and God was father of Adam. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, so what? So what? <laughs> hey, what? What do you want to know? No, no, no. I want to make this point. Okay. Uh, the, the term "son of God" doesn't mean in the Bible. Usually, doesn't mean that he's divine. Okay. It usually means. That he is, um, uh, what do you call it? But he, he used to call him son of man, um, Marcos. Mark. No. There's a big book on, uh, on, on the, uh, almost in the 1905. 1905. Who referred to him as son of man? Jesus. Not Jesus on himself. Jesus refers to himself as a son of man. No, okay. Time and time and time and time again. Why? Because let's go back to, um, let's go back to Daniel. Daniel 7. And I, this is this one thing that I'm going to be doing in the conference that I'm going to Colombia. Mm -hmm. Natalie, this, this is where it gets interesting. It's Daniel 7. I have a Colombia Oh, yeah. Well, Larry wants to go. Enrique wants to go. I have to take Erica now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. David, man. David, sorry, Daniel, yeah? Daniel 7, 13. This is not enough of it. No, Enrique. <laughs> Daniel. You didn't get it before you. That's the way to learn, Enrique. Daniel. Daniel 7. No wonder. I can't get it. You know. Spend Daniel 7. There's oh, my child. There's the only one Daniel. 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 It tells me in the Bible you're not in alphabetical order. Where are you? Yeah, there's only one. So seven, seven? Oh, seven. Uh, seven. Uh, Thirteen. Mira, los profetas, la mayor profesor, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezequiel, and Daniel. And that's the way they are in the in, in our world. Okay. You haven't right. watched my Where are we going? Uh, seven. 
713. And this is very important. He says, In my vision at night I look and there was and there was before me yes. no and there before me was one like like what? Like a son of man. Like a son of man. And look what happened. Coming with the clouds of heaven. So where is he coming from? He's, he's like a son of man, but he's not coming from the earth. He's coming in the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. <coughs> and then, go to Matthew. And then go to Matthew. And, and, and this I found out yesterday. Yesterday I found out listening to a guy who just wrote a book. And, and um, a book on, on Jesus' pre-existence. And he referred to this, and I had never thought about this. What did Jesus say before he went to heaven? He said this. He said this in, um, in 28.18. So now you're going to make the connection, because I never, I never do. I went through, well, this guy is... is, is He's making new um, research. Matthew 28. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28, 18. Matthew 28. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark. Okay, you're almost there. Mark 28, what? 28, 18. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What was said to the to the Son of Man? He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power on all nations and peoples in every language to worship him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And what did Jesus say? I've been given dominion, I've been given authority <coughs> in heaven and on earth. So the Son of Man talks that he is from heaven. The Son of God is that he is the descendant of, of the kings. Psalm 2, go to Psalm 2, and, and then we'll, we continue after this. Psalm 2. This is one of the most important things for you to understand who Jesus is, or who Jesus thinks of himself. 28, okay? mm -hmm. 28, 18, mm -hmm. Those, Psalm 2. Ah, Psalm 2. Uh, why do people conspire in people's plot in vain? The kings of the air rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and his anointed saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven loves, the Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my whole mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He, he, he said to me, who, 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 who said, What did he say? You are my son. Today I have become your father. So this is the, this is, imagine they have the scroll, and this is where the book of Psalms is. So they take the book of Psalms and they put on top of, um, of, of uh, the king is standing, and they say, and they write this thing to them. You are my son. Today I have become, I have become your father. Mm. So when so who is this talking about? But the king. So when when so this the son of God means that he's king. I don't say nothing. No, I say nothing. No, but because because this is revolu revolutionary. No, no, no. It's good. It's good. I'm just thinking something silly like that. Yeah. And when Jesus came came from the baptism, and what what did the boy say from heaven? This is my son, in whom I'm well pleased. This is my son, in whom I'm well pleased. If, the, if this is my son, it comes from Psalm 2, in whom I will please come from Isaiah, the suffering servant. So, Son of God is human, Son of Man is divine. Weird, yeah? 
Because you will think the, the other way around. The other way around. Yeah, exactly. but, but Jesus says, if the Son of Man, he, he, he always says the Son of Man, the Son of Man, the Son of Man, in the, in the, in the book of Mark, he, he goes back to the Son of Man again, and this is really going to be the last one. <laughs> but when, when, when he's arrested, he says, um, where is it? Uh, when they kill him. Okay. Um, Mark 14. 61 when the, the, the high priest stood before them and asked Jesus are you not going to answer what is this testimony that these men are bringing against you but Jesus remained silent and gave no answer again the high priest asked him are you the Messiah the son of the blessed one I am said Jesus and you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven, just like just like Daniel, there was a son of man, one like a son of man coming in the clouds. So Jesus is referring to him as that being that that, that guy from from before creation. So that's that. I mean, I find this is uh, I'm 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 a lot I'm a lot into this kind of thing. So I have a lot of books on it. So to me, the, to me about Matthew was very very interesting this week. Anyway, forgiveness. Jesus, um, uh, well, there you can, the Psalm 100, 103, 8, and 3, 8 to 13, and later you can read that later. That's what? 100 and what? 103. Psalm 103. 8 to 13. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. The Lord? Yes, yes. The slow to anger. Abounding in love, he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. Okay, so he, if he is not going to harbor his anger forever, <clears throat> we should not harbor our, our anger forever as well. Mm. Okay, continue. No. Then, then, he does not treat us as our sin deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. Mm -hmm. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as he as is the east, east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And the last one, 13. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear, fear him. For he knows that <coughs> we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass, they flourish like flower of the field, the wind blows over it and it is, and it is gone and its place remembers in no more. So, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him and His righteousness with their children, children, mm -hmm. with those who keep His covenant and remember to obey His precepts. Mm -hmm. So, He doesn't, he, 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 the Lord doesn't want... It, the Lord is not going to hold a grudge against us forever. Yeah. He doesn't. The Bible says that if we come, what, what did we read in John? If we confess our sins, mm. he's, helpful, he, he's faithful and He'll forgive us. So, forgive those who sin against us. So, we are happy that God forgives us our sins. But do we, do we forgive those who sin against us? No. Well, at least Enrique is, is very truthful. He's honest. He's honest, yeah. <laughs> but you're in trouble because you're not forgiving. Hey, hasta dónde llegas? ¿Cuál es el salmo? 108. No, no, no. 103, verse 8. I went all the way to. I keep on reading because I like it. <laughs> uh, to 15. Mm -hmm. Romans 3 23 says this. And, and this is this, this is when it gets <coughs> tough on us because we are seniors. Three twenty three says. It says. Uh, twenty three. Yeah. Which one? For all have uh, Romans three twenty three. Mm -hmm. For all have seen and fall short of the glory of God. <coughs> all have seen. Nobody can ever say I haven't seen. I'm a good person. All have seen, the Bible says. And this is what we were talking to, to this person the other day, Enrique. 
-hmm. We're trying to convince him. You have sinned. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. <laughs> have you yeah, ever but, lied? But, but this is the thing, right? People don't, they don't understand the word, the, the word sin. They think it's an act of doing wrong. Yeah, well, that's sin. And, and it's part of, that's the consequence mm -hmm. of sin. But sin is what we are born with. Mm -hmm. We are the the pride, the pravado, no? Augustine. Oh. Yeah, no, but it's true. Like yeah. we are infected with sin, so therefore all we can produce is bad things. Mm. Yeah, but this is what people need to understand before they they are front to the question of sin. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's it's just, it's all like, I mean, Yeah, you need to you need to go in and understand why are you a sinner. And, and that's why we're here. Uh, God willing, we're going to do the, the, we continue the Ten Commandments. Yeah. The Ten Commandments is very good. The Ten Commandments are very the, um, challenging. Yeah. Um, and because I, th I believe that uh, as Christians we should know a lot of praying the Ten Commandments, but, but I started looking at the Ten Commandments already. Yes. Uh, challenging. Okay, 323. And I'm going to tell you a story. Well, actually, Jesus is going to tell us the word he's going to read. <laughs> The story is this one, um, uh, Matthew 18, mm -hmm. 21 to 33. 18, what? 21 to, to 33. <coughs> this is how we should forgive. Jesus didn't only say, hey, forgive people, and that's it. Mm. He gave you a story to illustrate how we should forgive. Yeah, yeah. 18, 18, 30, uh, 18, 21. 18, 31. No, 20, 21. Okay, I'm gonna read it, listen, but listen. Because I want you to listen how the story is told, not just, li just not, not to read it, okay? Not to yeah. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Why did he say up to seven times? Mm. Uh, go back to Genesis. Mm. In Genesis, I don't know. in Genesis, um, it's a lucky number. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Enrique's uh, theology. He he, he is uh, guesses. <coughs> in Genesis, Genesis four. Um, in Genesis 4, how many times is Cain to be avenged if anybody does anything to him? Seven. Seven times! Mm -hmm. Cain said to the Lord, 4.13, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be restless, wander on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. See, he just killed his brother, and then he's complaining, Oh man, you're gonna send me out of your prison, somebody's gonna <coughs> kill me. And God is so merciful, he says, No, they will not kill you. So God forgives him. I don't I don't know, I don't know how, but God forgives him because he says, But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Okay, seven times. And then <coughs> and then this other guy, Lamech. One of uh, Lamech is believed that he that he was one of Cain's descendants and he killed him. That's why he says this. Lamech said to his wives, Ara and Silla, and 23, Ara and Silla, listen to me. Wives of Lamech, hear my boy, hear my words. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for injuring me. If Cain is avenged seven times, then Lamech 77 times. So Jesus is working with this concept that I want revenge and revenge and revenge and revenge. If somebody hits you, 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 don't, you, you don't hit them back once, too. Yeah? You what? You do? You start hitting them. That's why an eye for an eye is not a bad law because if somebody takes one eye, what do you want to do? You want to take both from the other person. Mm -hmm. If somebody cuts your hand, you want to cut both hands. No, you, you, you have to be uh, proportionate. Okay, let's go back to uh, Matthew 11, uh, 18, 21. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, 
I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. So if Lamech asked for vengeance 77 times, Jesus asked forgiveness 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And listen to the story. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Forgive us our debts. Forgive our debtors. Forgive us our sins. Remember, because it also says in English, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who, who, who have debt against us. So, since he was not able to pay, the master of At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. And I will pay back everything. The, servant, the servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found out he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. So, how much did he owe the master? He owed ten thousand bags of gold. But this guy owed him one hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees, just like he did, and begged him. Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. The same words, the same, the same very words that he, he used. But he refused. Instead, he went, he went off and, and had the men thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what, what had happened, they were in outrage and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancel all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart, not just from here. Uh, this is good, eh? Because, oh, yeah, 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 forgive you, forgive you, okay? And then you turn around, I just did it because they needed to hear that. God doesn't count that. God doesn't count politics. Because that's what politics is. That's what politics is. And today, ah, and today we saw it. I will rule for everybody, everybody come together again. He never asked for, for he never asked forgiveness for saying that the illegal criminals, disabled, <laughs> and all those people. He never asked forgiveness. He said, "No, no, no. We have to come back. We we have to come." And somebody was saying, a Christian, very respected. Oh, he sounds so presidential. Yeah, but he doesn't sound any Christian. And the Bible says that whoever talks like that, it's not it's not a good person. Mm -hmm. So we when we forgive somebody, we have to forgive them from the heart. And that's hard. That's hard. We can forgive. Okay. Everything's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's done. But if you don't forgive from here, if you don't feel that forgiveness from here, it's very hard. So Jesus said the story. So do we forgive? <laughs> it's very challenging. And also, um, by forgiving, we take church up to here. How do you forgive people in the church who have wronged you, who have who have ratted out of you like we did? We were we were kicked out of a house because the church wanted the wanted the house. Remember that? And they like Alamanda. I remember. Yeah. Not going to Torreira. Not going to Torreira because it's very hard to forgive. Why which one? There. Ah. Yeah, the people who 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 did that to us are not there anymore. That's what I can say. The bad people because they were bad they, they they got rid of the next pastor as well he lasted even less than three months and we talk and we say we have to forgive them and we're gonna see how jesus forgives people jesus is the is, he's incredible how he forgives when i talk to people on facebook and they say oh we should bomb everybody we should do this we should do that no no we shouldn't because jesus didn't tell us we shouldn't be like the assassin, <coughs> like in the game. <laughs> you kill people and they like doing it. 
We should forgive because this is so important because we've been forgiven by Jesus. Colossians 2, 13 and 15. Now. <coughs> if you can read it. Colossians. Everybody enjoys when the best guy suffers anyway. Colossians 2, 13 and 15. Mm -hmm. suffer, suffer. <laughs> suffer, suffer. Die, die. Colossians 2, 13 and 15. 13 and 15. It feels so good. <laughs> it feels so good. <laughs> revenge, revenge. No, it feels Colossians. so good. <laughs> Colossians 2, 13. Too much game. Huh? Okay, read it. Okay. Xbox. Yeah. So the, the thing is, the voice comes from here. So they might think it's you talking. <laughs> okay, not just gonna read. When you were dead in your sins and in the. Um, and in your sins. And in your trust, what is it? I don't know. And in your. And in the. And in the circumcision. Of the, your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having fulfilled the chains of our legal indebtedness. Indebtedness. <coughs> death. Again, death. Indebtedness, yes. Which stood against us and condemned us. As he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle. He made a spectacle, yes. Of them, tarrying other over them by the cross. So he forgave all our sins and forgave all our debts. That's what that's what I see. Um, in Matthew, in Matthew, Matthew says, I don't know if in Matthew, in my, in my version says that, but but in the old, in the old version of the Lord's prayer it says, forgive us. See, in, in Matthew says, forgive us our debts, as we also forgive. Uh, we have also forgiven our debtors. And I remember once in hermano, what's the name? Hermano Cayenge's house. And they talk about. Blessed are those who, who long for peace, for they shall see the kingdom. <laughs> Blessed are those the peacemakers, for they shall be the, uh, inherit the kingdom of God. And they were talking about anything except for what Jesus meant. Mm. And in this, and we just read in um, in what, what, what did we read in Matthew 18, 20, uh, 21 to 33. What would you read? What did Jesus use as an example to forgive? Mm -hmm. Debts. How much you owe. And then in Matthew, he uses that same word when forgive our debtors as we forgive those who have, who, who, as we also have forgiven our, de forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And then Jesus picks up the same thing in Matthew 18 mm -hmm. and gives the example, how are we supposed to forgive? So do we, so, so forgiveness and debt, we have a debt that God said to us, you owe us, you owe me, because you sinned, but I'm, gonna, I'm willing to forgive you, and how did he forgive us? By sending his son, dying on the cross, and nailing, I, I don't know if you've been to this, I, I don't know if you've been to these, um, to these churches where they nailed stuff to the cross, Levi, have you, or you heard that? It says here. <laughs> 13. When you were dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all of our sins, all of our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. Cancel charge indebtedness. All this transaction, which stood against us and condemned us, He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. So a lot of people they they they, they object. Like if you have if if you have a grudge against somebody and say okay. We're gonna do this, 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 this act. We're mm -hmm. gonna write who you hate, and you're gonna nail it on the cross. So they have like, like little pins, and you nail it on the cross, mm -hmm. and you say, you believe that this is what Jesus did. So I'm, I'm, I'm believing it. Mm -hmm. And some people see it as weird, but it's, it has some Bible, biblical reference. Some people are weird, but <laughs> but but this has a biblical thing. You can mm -hmm. visualize that Jesus. This what word, is that? Uh, what, Matthew, okay? No, Matthew. Colossians 2. Uh, Colossians 2. 13 to 15. 
And the 15, verse 15 is very good because it's, and having discerned the powers and the authorities. The powers and the, and the authorities, he made a public spectacle, a spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And you're reading this and say, well, but the cross kills people. You don't triumph. In the cross, Rome says they triumph. Because Rome has the ultimate power to kill you. And how does he kill you? By putting you on a cross and killing you. And Paul says, no. In the cross, Jesus disarmed the powers and authority of Rome and of sin and conquers it. Again, like the Son of Man, total reversal. The Bible is full of that. Reversal, reversal, and reversal. And finally, Jesus' example. And this is the most beautiful example that I have ever read. Matthew 23. Mm -hmm. Matthew 23. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I thought you were going to read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matthew 23. Erica, can you read it? No, actually, not Matthew 23, Matthew 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, Luke 23, 34. Mm -hmm. And the last chapter. Ouch. Hard words. Erika, you want it? You read? Luke 20, 23, <coughs> uh, 34. He says, 32, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with, with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and on the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So Jesus is in the cross. He was just put to death. He's going to die. What, he, what, what does he do? Forgive him. Yes, forgive. He forgives. He forgave them. But Jovel, you have to defend your family. They told me. I am uh, the Facebook. But you have to do this, you have to do that. And, and I said, well, I have to forgive. Christ Christians conquer the, the empire not by guns. Yeah. Not by legal maneuvers, but by forgiving. And finally, save us from that time of trial and deliver us from evil. Jesus was sleeping once in Matthew. He was sleeping through a storm. And we think that he replied, and again, in the Old Testament, who calmed who calm the, the, the wind and the seas? In the one in the Old Testament, Moses. Yes, yes Moses. <clears throat> Stand their stuff, and the wind mm. came and boom. Mm. So, Jesus, what does he do? And then the people said, and, and, and look, the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Obey him. We are in a battle that we have to win. Ephesians 6, 10 and 13. Can you deal with that, Rick? Which one? Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. You like this one. Because you like 
assassins and the <laughs> 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 armor of God. Yeah, see, 10 to 13. Oh, I was reading really, we were looking at this last see? time. Yeah. Finally, to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor. But, or, or deliver us, and deliver us from you, but I put a but there because sometimes it comes up. And huh? deliver, see, but or end. It's a conjunction. It's a, it's a conjunction in Greek, is Kai, which you can translate but or end. <laughs> so so I, I translate it but. <laughs> so, uh, um, but deliver or end deliver us from evil. So save us from the time of trial, but he gives us all the all, all the all the armor <coughs> to fight against the evil one. Enrique Ray. So but the thing is that it's something still happens to us. Uh, I remember when um, when this pastor from our church, <coughs> no, 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 for we our church, there's a Tongan church, there's a Tongan congregation, and he had a big accident. And he almost died. You remember that Pastor Ata? And he almost died. And he, he's a good man, he's a good pastor. In, 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 in the other Gospels, I like um, what he says. Matthew, let me see, but Matthew, Matthew, uh, the other, uh, this, this, this story is again in Luke, in Luke um, 8, 22 and 25. And I like what the what the disciples say to him. And sometimes I maybe I get it wrong because I, I I'm thinking in Spanish. He says, one day Jesus said to his disciples, "Let us go over the other side of the lake." So they got into the, to a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, "Master, Master, we're going we're, we're going to drown." He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters, the storms subsided, and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. And fear and amazement. See, Luke says fear and amazement. In fear and the amazement, they ask one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. But there's one but, but there's one verse and, and there's one story. I think it's still in Matthew, Matthew 14, where he says, don't you care that we are going to perish? There, I don't know, Jesus walks in the water. No. I don't know if you remember, Lady, that one? But it's, it's still, it's, it's still, it's really, it's, they're having a, um, they're having a very bad in Mark. They should be marking. Mark 4, 36. Mark 4, 36. And take that one way. Yeah, there it is. Here, here. 4, 35 says, they, that day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just yes, as he was in the boat. There were also others, other boats with him. The first squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that he was nearly swamped. Jesus was at the stern, at the top of the, of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? So, sometimes we're, this is, the, this is the message. I mean, sometimes we are going through this thing and we're almost dying. We have four, Enrique, four, um, you were in Disney, 435. Mm -hmm. And we are almost, and, and we ask, Lord, don't you care that was happening to me? Save us from the time of trial. He, he cares, but we have to go and wake him up. We have to pray. We have to fast. We have to ask him to come to us. And he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and he was completely calm. 
He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And listen to this. This, this is what it says in Mark. It doesn't say they were fearful. This doesn't say they were amazed. Mark says they were terrified. And asked each other, who is this even the wind and the waves obey him? Because what happens when you are in front of God? What happens when if God comes right now and He's between us? What's going to happen to us? We're going to go mush. We die. So these guys, they got worried. God did this in the Old Testament. He's with us in the boat. We're going to die. Mm. That's why they were terrified. Remember when Moses... Not because they were going to drown. But because no. They were gonna so, so they were afraid of drowning. Through the right. And yeah, now they're the afraid right. of dying because who's in the boat with them? The son of man. God himself. God. So do you get now what, what's going on? What's happening? Mm. And see, this is how they were drowning. And now they're afraid of... Because they were in front of them. <coughs> what, what happened when, when, when Moses... Uh, when Moses... Uh, uh, one sign. Yeah, no, no. When Moses saw that burning bush, I'm going to see what's this burning bush. And then what did God say? Take off your sandals because this is holy ground. Yeah. And when God, and when Moses asked God to see him, what did God say? No, no one can see me and live. So what did God do? He put Moses in, a, in a, like a little mountain. And he went like this, mm-hmm. and he covered him with his hand, and he went like that, and then Moses only saw his back. Because no human can see God and live. So, when we are in trouble, what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. And when we're tossed around, we're afraid of, um, of dying, mm-hmm. of drowning, there's somebody greater than that. So, he keeps us safe. And the last thing we're going to read is actually the same as Romans 8. Oh my God. We're reading a lot of a lot, and by now we're finished. Five minutes. Mm-hmm. Romans 8. No, it's okay because we, that's when we finish, usually finish. But we finish with be, be, be 8 31 and 39. 8 31 and 39. So I'm going to read it. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and also and is also interceding for us. So if we sin, well, what does Paul say? Uh, John says, if we sin, we have a lawyer. We have somebody. An advocate. An advocate. That's what John says. And, and another point, yeah? Another yeah. point. You got to be happy. We have an advocate. Another point. <laughs> we have an advocate who is interceding on our behalf. So, so this that's what John says, and this is what also uh, Paul says. And it's also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the law of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sore, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers. Again, this power, 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 power comes up again. Have you noticed? Powers, 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 <coughs> powers. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us, separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So even save us from the time of trial. Paul is saying that even though we go for trial, even though evil is done against us, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing. 
So when we go through bad things, are we separated from the love of God? No. No. God is still with us. Yes. But we also, but we always show take care that we should not fall because in First Peter and this is the last, mm. this is the last one. First Peter one, no, First Peter five, eight, and nine it says this. First Peter five, eight, and nine. And read it, Natalie. What? First Peter. It's almost the last one. Yes. One, five, eight, and nine. One, five, eight, and nine. The so one five eight to nine. Yes. So verse five and then eight to nine. Yes. Okay. Who through faith are shared by God power until the coming no. of the No, no, no. First Peter five. No. Five. Uh, five. Chapter five, verse <laughs> eight. Yeah, Be alert in the silver line, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. 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 You see some standing for the faith because we know that the family of believers throughout the world <clears throat> is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Mm. Do you listen, Nika? Huh? Do you listen? Do you know this one, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So be alert. And this is the way you should, you should read uh, everybody. Read, <coughs> read more, um, read less fast to get it in. Be alert of, and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, <coughs> standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. So yes, uh, ima imagine those Christians in Syria mm. who are being killed, who are being, they have to walk during the night with all the children. That's bad. And we are here complaining. <laughs> complaining about what we're going through. Mm -hmm. There are all the Christians who are suffering even more than, than we are. Okay, so forgive us our sins. We have to forgive as we forgive those who sin against us and save us from the time of trial and or but deliver us from evil. And the last part for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is actually not in the region. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. This is not in the original text, but they put it inside because it sounds good. It sounds good. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. So all that we have prayed, we say, and the, and the people put Jesus, Jesus calls us to do this. Mm. The kingdom. We say, uh, your kingdom come, the power, you will be done, and your glory. What's God's glory? Where do we see the glory of God? Where do we see the glory of God? Hmm? Maybe, you know, an idea. Hmm? No wrong answer. <laughs> no wrong answer. Where do we see the glory of God? In the cruz. That's where we see the glory of God. Because that's where God forgave us our sins. That's where God conquered the powers, mm -hmm. the authorities, and made an expect a spectacle of them. That's where you see the glory of God. So the glory of God is, if, ah, Enrique is going to make fun of me, but it's somebody hanging on a cross, naked, naked, uh, bleeding, 
That's when you see the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Totally against what the world thinks the glory of God is. And that's the challenge. All right? Okay.